Well, good morning and welcome to Restore this morning. What a great start to the morning. Thank you, Hayley. Thank you, Mookie. Um, we are, I hope you, I was dancing off to the side there. I hope you were too. This morning is all about worship. And so I want to invite you in right from now. Uh, this is our 21 days of wellness. And over the three weeks, we are going to be looking at three different different aspects of uh, Isaiah 42 uh, verses uh, 5 and 6 that Ian showed us last week. And this week we're really focusing in on worship and we've kicked off uh, with big worship. And this morning is going to be slightly different in its format. We're going to give loads of time to worship God, loads of time to step into uh, the bigness and the goodness of God. And so I want to invite you right in now to that. And so we're going to uh, be sharing some of that this morning. You may have noticed I had my mask on as I stepped up. We've always been really good at COVID uh, compliance here at Woodford, where we stream from. And we've always had our masks on, but often we've taken them off uh, before we come on camera. But due to the, the national lockdown and the increased numbers of cases and the severity of the situation, we've actually decided to put our masks on and keep them on until the very last moment. Uh, so I hadn't forgotten to take it off. That's our new rule. Um, hopefully these guys have now, yes, I can see behind me, have put theirs on as well. And so we just wanted to let you know uh, that we are being compliant, always have been, but we've stepped it up yet another level considering the severity of the current situation. And so this morning, we're, we're not going to spend loads of time uh, doing uh, talks or that sort of thing, but we do want to lead you in with some thoughts into the bigness of God and how we can worship God and how that impacts us and our wellness and who we are. And like I said last week, Ian uh, spoke to us about our, our vision for 2021 from those verses from Isaiah, which will hopefully come up on the screen now. And those verses that speak about kind of the bigness of God. And we, it talks about the, when those, there we go. <laughs> this is what the Lord God says. Who created the heavens and stretched them out. Who spread out the earth and its offspring. Who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will also hold you by the hand and watch over you. And I will appoint you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations. And like I said, over the 21 days, we're going to be unpacking those verses. And we're going to focus in on three aspects that it brings out. The first in week one, worship. And I hope you got uh, the first daily email today and the daily video. If you didn't, then let us know on the chat. And whoever's on the chat will, will connect you in and make sure that we have your information and we can get those emails to you every day over the 21 days. There'll be a video and an encouragement. Week two, we'll be looking at friendship and how we connect in. And then week three, about the generosity of God and how that impacts our community and our own wellness as well. So like I said, this morning we're starting 21 days. We're focusing on worship. And those verses, if we look at them from the message version, which Ian also showed us last week, it says God's message, the God who created the cosmos, stretched out the skies, laid out the earth and all that grows from it who breathes life into earth's people, makes them alive with his own life. I am God. I have called you to live right and well. I have taken responsibility for you, kept you safe. I have set you among my people to bind them to me and provided you as a lighthouse to the nations. And this morning we're focusing on those words about God who created the cosmos, who stretched out the skies and laid out the earth and all that's in it. And I love that Heidi and Karis Joy this morning kind of spoke of the bigness of the universe. And those verses from Isaiah came, it's really helpful to know that those came at a time when the Israelites had no access to the temple, no access to their land. You know, they'd been, they'd been overthrown by the, by the Babylonians and they were feeling kind of, who are we and who is God? And I don't know about you. <laughs> But I think off the back of 2020 and even just the back of this week, we're like, who is God? Who are we? We feel overthrown by and assaulted by the enemy. We don't have access to places we would normally have access, the, the physical church building maybe. And what I love about these verses is that into that situation, 
Isaiah the prophet gives that message. Into that situation of people saying, we don't know who we are, or who God is anymore. We feel beaten down and we don't have access to him anymore in the way we did. And Isaiah brings this message of, yes, but remember who God is and remember how he works. Remember the bigness of God. It's almost like Isaiah is kind of, and I'm staring right into a camera, but he's, he's zooming out from the, the very issue that they're facing and the, the, the kind of the closeness of that. And he's zooming to a wide angle shot of how big God is, reminding people who God is and how he works. And this week, I know, has been really tough for a lot of us. I'm thinking about the parents. I'm thinking about kids. I'm thinking about teenagers, our youth. I'm thinking about our healthcare workers under such pressure and our frontline workers. I'm thinking of our dear friend Ken who lost his wife. I'm thinking of Andy and Stella who are in hospital right now with COVID. I'm thinking of Frida and David who are facing a diagnosis this week. I'm thinking of the Mellows and their family as they deal with COVID within their wider family. And I feel like that message from Isaiah this morning is saying, yes, but I want you to remember who God is and how he works. And that's the call for us this morning. Sometimes when we're living in in terrible situations and times like we are, we, we only see what's right in front of us and we block out the bigness of God, like an eclipse I heard someone say recently. And it's Isaiah this morning is saying to us, zoom out, go to the wide angle. Remember how big God is and how he really works. He is the God who created the cosmos, who laid out the skies and the earth and all everything in it. That's what Heidi and Caris Joy were saying this morning. Go back and look at that later or go and look up Louis Giglio and Indescribable. He talks about how if we even tried to count one star per second within our Milky Way, it would take us two and a half thousand years to do that. And that's just our Milky Way. That's not the whole universe. The Milky Way is something like the size of a quarter if the universe was the size of North America. Like we, we serve a big God. We know a big God. Nothing is impossible for him. He is the, the holy of holy. He's the Lord of lords. He's, he's on high. He is sovereign. He is majestic. And our call this morning is to come and worship him, to remember the bigness of God. Last week, Ian talked about recapturing the wow, or recapturing the, the wonder of who God is. And that's my prayer for us this morning and all of this week as we focus on worship, that we would recapture the wonder of who God is. You know, I think back to when I was little and I was going to church and uh, Sunday school, as it was then. And so I think of some of the songs I was taught really early on that were kind of anthems um, in my childlike faith. It was, my God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. And then there was, uh, he's the king of the universe. He's the king of the jungle, the sea. You know, bubble, 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 ooh, ooh. Um, <laughs> good job, I can't sing. But there were songs about the bigness of God, how awesome he is. My God is so big. And I feel like as a child, I was like, wow, my God is so big. There's nothing he cannot do. And yet as I've grown up, and I know I'm not the only one, I've tried to understand God more. I've tried to think, kind of fit him into my little brain. And it is pretty small, but I've tried to fit him in there. And so sometimes I've, I've taken the bigness of God and I've reduced it to a slogan an idea, a verse. And I've forgotten the bigness of God. I I have a sound bite. I have a a pithy saying that when someone asks me about God, I can say it. But actually, it misses out the wonder of who God is. And Jesus says in the Bible to have a childlike faith, to come to him as little children. And I want to encourage each of us this morning to to rediscover and start with the wow, 
We get so caught up with the why this and why that or who this and what that. And let's just lay that down this morning. And let's start with the wow. Let's recapture the wonder of who God is this morning. Let's worship him, the bigness of God. Let's get fresh revelation of how big our God is. My God is so big. My God is so strong. There is nothing that he cannot do. This is the God who created the cosmos, who, who laid out the starry skies and the earth and everything in it. This is the God we worship. And so I want to invite you this morning, right now, to be like a child and, and rediscover the wonder and the wow of who God is. And so this morning, like I said, is a bit different. We're, we're going to spend more time in worship. And so I want to encourage you to maybe do something a bit different this morning. When I'm at home watching and, and the service, I'm sat on my sofa. And I'm sure most of you are too. Or maybe you're even in bed. That's okay. I'm not envious at all. But, but I want to say to you this morning, why don't you get off the sofa? Why don't you jump out of bed? Why don't you step up and do something different to engage with the bigness of God? Don't shrink God down to a TV show that you're watching. Step in and engage with the God of the universe this morning. Mookie and Haley are going to lead us in some worship now that talks about the bigness of God, the holiness of God, the grandeur of God, the sovereignty of God, the majestic nature of God. And I'm going to pray for us as we step into that time of worship. And then later on, after that, Ian's going to come in and we're going to spend some time. There's going to be opportunity to pray with one another over Zoom, to anoint one another or ourselves with oil in the Holy Spirit. And we just want to really engage with God this morning. So why don't you stand wherever you are or kneel down. Just make a step forward if you want to. to acknowledge that you want to step into the wonder of God this morning. You want to recapture it. Father God, we thank you that you are the God of the universe, the heavens and the earth. Father, we thank you that you are sovereign. You are Lord. You are holy. And you are bigger than we could ever imagine. And we're so sorry for reducing you. Father, I pray that this morning we would recapture the wonder of who you are. Lord, we'd recapture the wonder of your majestic nature. We'd recapture the wonder of your awesomeness, God. Lord, we want to think of you and have our minds blown. Lord, we want to think on you and worship you and have our hearts overflowing. And Father, I believe you can do that this morning. We don't want to limit you. We don't want to reduce you. We want to say, come Holy Spirit and be big God this morning to each and every one of us. We want to recapture the wonder of who you are that we might just have nothing else to say, but wow, you are God. Wow. Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking with me, and having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the middle of the lampstands I saw one like a son of man, clothed in a robe, reaching to the feet, and girded across his chest with a golden sash. His head and his hair were white like white wool like snow, and his eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, when it has been made to glow in a furnace, and his voice was like the sound of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun, shining in its strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. And uh, that reading is from the beginning of Revelation chapter 1, and what happens in Revelation is the Spirit of God moves and gives to John, who wrote, he's the author of Revelation, the Spirit of God gives him a vision of Jesus in his glory and in his beauty and in his majesty. 
And John has no other response he can possibly make other than to fall on his face before Jesus and say, wow, wow, you're mighty, wow, you're majestic, wow, you're awesome. And it's like for John, uh, things shift in terms of perspective and he recaptures again the wonder of who God is. But not only does he recapture the wonder of who God is, but what I love about the passage is Jesus then reaches out with his right hand and he reaches down and he puts his right hand onto John and the, the life of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the love of Jesus, the majesty of Jesus is transferred from his hand into John. And then John rises up in resurrection power, in the life of God, in the life of God's spirit. And uh, Isaiah 42, if you remember that passage, but it talks about the God who created the cosmos, who stretched out the skies, who laid out the earth and all that grows in it. And then it goes on and it says, who breathes life into earth's people, who makes them alive with his own life. And you see what happens when we capture a fresh perspective on the beauty of God then uh, we uh, see that that God draws near to us and he puts his hand on us and he releases his life into our lives. In Genesis chapter 1, when it, uh, it takes us through the creation story, it says uh, man was formed by the dust of the earth, but it says God then breathed. And as, as the first man, as Adam, was filled with the breath of God, then it says he became a living being. And right the way through the Bible, at different places, in different circumstances, in different situations, we see God breathing from heaven and filling people with his spirit. Whether it's uh, Israel, when they uh, first... Uh, uh, create the tabernacle and God comes near in the cloud of his presence and his spirit rests on his people in a new way and they truly know God in the very center, God in the very midst of them. Whether it's Mary as a teenage girl who experiences a message from uh, Gabriel and Gabriel says to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, it will overshadow you or it will envelope you and then the life of Jesus is born in Mary. Whether it's Jesus standing in the Jordan River at the moment of his baptism and and he comes out of the water and the spirit of God rains down like a, like a dove from heaven. The breath of God fills Jesus with the supernatural life and power of God. And then Jesus comes and brings the kingdom of God in. He sees healing come. He sees death defeated. He sees fear banished. He sees the supernatural power of God released. Whether it's 120 frightened believers in a prayer meeting in Acts chapter 2 and God breathes once more from heaven and the breath of God, the life of God breathes into those 120 people. The 120 people become 3,000 off one sermon from Peter and then the church explodes into life. We are in difficult circumstances, as Jody said earlier. We're in complicated situations globally, not just with the pandemic. Think of the events this week in the States. We're in difficult times. But you know, none of that minimizes who God is. None of that diminishes who we are in him. And none of that reduces his ability to breathe life into us. And the sense we had for this morning is God wants us to look again into the face of Jesus. Jesus, like John had that revelation in Revelation chapter 1 and see the bigness of God. So many voices saying so many different things to us. But let's keep looking at Jesus as we start this 21 days. Let's keep looking at the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the victorious one, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who's part of an unshakable kingdom. We know the kingdoms of this world, they will go and they will be replaced by the kingdom of our Lord and of our Saviour. We can put our feet down on the firm rock that he gives us and we become a people that are unshakable. And as we capture afresh the glory, the vision, the, the picture of who God is, then so God reaches out his hand and his breath of life, the God who created the cosmos, breathes his life, the life of the spirit, and puts that life into us afresh. And that's what makes us unshakable. That's what means we do not fear. That's what means we can walk even through the valley of the shadow of death knowing that God is with us. And I want to invite you, let's just take a moment and let's invite the Spirit of God, the breath of God, 
the wind of God's spirit. Let's invite the spirit of God to come and fill us right now, just like John experienced the hand of God coming and touching him and releasing God's life. Wherever you are, maybe you just want to close your eyes. Just uh, become aware again of your own breathing. And as you breathe in, breathe in the spirit of God. As you breathe out, let your stress go. Let your fear go. Let the events of this week, let them go. Just breathe them out. Like the carbon dioxide, get rid of them. It's not going to do you any good. But then breathe in again. The freshness of the spirit of God, the freshness of the life of God. Take some deep breaths. Just breathe in the spirit of God. Breathe out the other stuff. Breathe in the spirit of God. Breathe out the other stuff. Breathe in the spirit of God. Breathe out the other stuff. Lord, we pray that you will breathe again from heaven by your spirit. Lord, we pray that God who created the cosmos might release his breath right now into me, Father, into every one of us gathered this morning, into every person tuning in. Father, we pray the breath of God, the spirit of God will come and descend. We pray, Father, that uh, your supernatural resurrection life will come and fill each one of us right now. Lord, we let go. We surrender our fears. Lord, we bring our griefs to you. We bring our struggles to you. And Lord, as we come into your presence, we pray for fresh life, fresh power, fresh peace. Father, let your spirit, Father, enfold us just like it did on Mary. Father, let your spirit wrap itself around us. And may we be aware of your presence within us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And we encourage you this morning to maybe bring some oil to the live stream or some perfume. If I reach into my back pocket, I'll find a little bit of olive oil. If you've got some oil or some perfume, can I invite you right now, just put a little bit on your finger. Just take a moment. And in the Old Testament, uh, as a sign of being anointed with God's spirit, they used to take some oil and they used to put it on a king or a priest's on their forehead. And so just take a little bit of the perfume. If you're in a family, you can do this to one another. If you're in a, uh, a support bubble, you can do that to one, this to one another. If you're on your own, you can do what I'm doing. Anoint yourself. Take a little bit of that perfume. Take a little bit of that oil. Put it on your finger. Put it on your forehead. And say, I welcome you, Spirit of God. I receive an anointing. From heaven, I receive an anointing of your spirit. I will not fear. But I know the overcoming power of the spirit of God washing over my life, anointing me for this very day. And I draw on the resources of heaven. I draw on the life of God. I draw on the breath of God's spirit. And I receive it right now, right now, right now. Right now, and just where you are, let the Spirit of God minister to you. Let the Spirit of God flow over your life afresh. Maybe this week's been tough. Maybe as you just receiving from the Spirit of God, maybe the Spirit is just bringing up some of the, the grief and the trauma. If you're feeling tearful, just let the tears flow. Maybe this morning, maybe this week's been really frantic, and this morning... You just need to rest and feel afresh the peace of God's spirit. Whatever way the Holy Spirit is working in you right now, just welcome the work of the spirit. And let's keep leaning in to the work of the spirit. Haley and Mookie are going to continue to lead us in worship. As we continue to lead in worship, we're just going to keep inviting God's spirit to come. So let's keep engaging with God. Like Jody said, if you want to kneel, kneel. If you want to stand again, stand again. If you want to lie down, lie down. Whatever most would help you to engage with God's spirit and to let his spirit work in your life. And let's give place and room for this. We also, we've lined up a, a great prayer team this morning and they're already on the Zoom call. 
and the chat hosts will put the Zoom code in. Uh, if you would like someone to pray with you, if you would like someone to be alongside you as you anoint yourself afresh for 2021, then use that Zoom code and uh, you'll be put into a, a, a Zoom room with a couple of our prayer team and we will pray alongside you for God's spirit to fill you afresh. Maybe you are struggling with the events of this week. Maybe you're a frontline healthcare professional. Maybe you're one of our teachers or our heads. You know, I celebrate every educator and I have no idea how you're managing to navigate this current season and all the demands on you. If you would just like someone to pray alongside you, maybe there's someone that you're concerned about because they're in, in hospital at the moment or because they've had a diagnosis, click on the Zoom code. We want to be family together. We want to be church family together. We want to uh, uh, carry one another in our difficult times and we want to stand alongside one another and help one another to encounter again the bigness of God and to receive again the life of God's Spirit. So we're going to continue to worship Jesus as we do. If you would like someone to pray with you, please, please, please uh, don't be shy. Click on the Zoom code. The prayer team are going to be around for the rest of the morning and we'll pray for people as long as we need to. We'll be online for as long as we need to. Do not let yourself get isolated. Do not struggle alone. Let's be community. Let's be kingdom people together. Let's keep inviting the Spirit of God to come. Haley's going to kick us off with a song. It starts off with, with, in some ways, an interesting first line. It says, there must be more than this. But the reality is there's always more of God for us. It's not a lack of, uh, a, a, of faith in terms of a statement. It's just a, an understanding that there's always more of Jesus that we can get hold of. So let's welcome God's Spirit. If you want someone to pray with you, click on that Zoom code. And let's continue letting the life of God fill us as we recapture the wonder of the bigness of who God is.